Hi everyone, hope you're safe, hope you're well. Today's video is in the main going to be about replenishing chassis because the chassis of this car, like many 996s of this age, is very tired. So we're going to identify what the common problems are, what the best ways are to sort the problems out. My endeavours took me to Right Tune, an independent Porsche specialist in Oxfordshire. Established in 2001, Right Tune is a family business, so my 911 would be in trusted hands. But first, I need to discuss my chassis purchases with you. See, here's the thing. I've always gone for genuine Porsche parts when it comes to my 911s, particularly when there's bushes involved. As a case in point, I've got top mounts all round ready to go on Little Irish here. And as you can see from the part numbers, they are genuine Porsche items. However, that 996 outside is badly perished underneath and the shopping list for need to buy now items is massive. Comprises, by the way, four new lower arms all round, four tuning forks to go with the arms, four rear control arms, two rear toe arms, two outer track rod ends. The price for Porsche genuine parts is in the thousands. It's a huge and unplanned outlay that in these uncertain economic times just doesn't make financial sense to me. My solution, Myler Original Parts. Yes, it's an aftermarket brand, but unlike most other aftermarket brands that I found in my hunt for new 996 chassis parts, there's a two year unlimited mile warranty attached to all of these. So if the bushes fail, which is an accusation often levied at aftermarket parts, I can get them replaced for free. It's a tempting offer, isn't it? And it's one that I've taken up. So we shall see both now and in the coming months how I get on. Let's get back to right tune. The guys had the knackered OEM control arms replaced in no time. Then it was on to removing those rear lower control arms, which needed a little bit of cajoling to get free. The Myler arms and tuning forks, a third of the price of a Porsche part, went on each side without a hitch. Rear toe arms were next for a swap, the originals not coming off the 996 without a fight. With more Myler arms soon in place, it was great to see new parts in place of tired old componentry on Little Irish. With most of the rear replenished, the guys fastened the anti-roll bar and put the 996's middle under tray back up before moving to the front, where Joe was quick to offer a professional synopsis on the general state of play. That push is absolutely... The front arms proved more tricky to remove than the rears, and once off, the cause of all that creaking became clear. The ball joint was severely perished, and the middle bushing was delaminating badly. Both would have failed their next MOT. Much needed new lower arms and tuning forks were put on, Joe also swapping over the original brake air feed. By the way, these often get lost over the years but do a vital job, so check your 996 still has these. Finally, the tyre track rod ends were swapped for TRW items, who were the original equipment manufacturer for much of the 996's chassis parts as it goes. These proved the biggest ball ache of the day to remove, but once free, Joe was happy to reveal one of his trade secrets. One, two, three. The counting of turns as the track rods come off means new parts can be applied back on with consistency. And the wheels can sit as centrally as possible in terms of track width positioning. A great example of paying extra attention to detail. And that was Little Irish suitably replenished. Before I left, I grabbed manager Chris for some 996 chassis FAQs. Chris, uh, thanks very much for your time today, buddy. No problem, mate. Chassis 101. First question straight off the top, how much of a nightmare a 996 is compared to other 911s? In terms of the chassis stuff, it's not too bad. It can be a problem, as you've seen today with your one. It's all come apart, hasn't it? And I said, you know, be aware, this might take, take two days. Might like, take two yeah. days. But, you know, things like with this component here, as I showed you, that's, uh, you know, alley with a steel bolt going through it and then you get electrolytic action and it corrodes. And corrosion, with corrosion is expansion. That's what your dad Tony was saying, wasn't it? And it just is a nightmare and you've often got to chop it out and it takes a lot more time. So actually, that's something I wanted to ask you. On a previous visit, you've said that anything near the sea is definitely, definitely more problematic usually, underneath. Usually it is, yeah. Usually it's more, it's worse because it's salt in the air yeah. I suppose and the thing that they have got what we found a lot with like the modern modern Porsches so like 996s and things onwards the chassis itself and the, sh and the bodywork is usually really good and rust free it's a lot of the stuff that's bolted to it is more has been attacked more whereas like in the earlier 911s of the air cooled stuff there's they have a lot more bodywork issues lower arms 
they are a well-known perennial problem. Yeah, they, yeah, exactly. The two main issues is the bushes are like failing and that's given just basically a irritating creaky noise mm. as well as it going out of spec. Yeah. And if it potentially could get so bad, they could be so worn that will then put your geometry out of spec. Yes, which was, I think, the problem with this Yeah, quite significantly. And also just like for general MOT stuff and you don't want this happening, but this bush can split. In terms of trying to like self-diagnose, a croak like froggy croak like sound over low bumps is lower arms yeah almost like you know like a creaky bed tuning forks that is that's more of a, a clunky it can sound like almost like someone's under the car with a hammer sometimes anti-roll bar bushes and drop links can also create a knocking sound so sometimes we're chasing one and it's a tuning fork and it could be anti-roll bar fairly topical for this video obviously because i've gone with Myla. let's talk porsche genuine porsche parts versus aftermarket it is proper practice widely recognized to stick with Porsche and admittedly I usually do with with my stuff is it a compromise to go with aftermarket stuff it could be more difficult to fit so it might take a bit longer in terms of it's like longevity it's difficult to say I don't think so but I know other people believe that the Porsche bushes and things like last longer that is something then for the customer to bear in mind or to weigh up rather it's the cost of the part versus the cost of perhaps additional labor to, to tweak yeah. a geo yeah it is a trade-off the original Porsche parts will have worn won't they yeah there'll yeah be there'll yeah. be some wear there yeah so even changing it there's always going to be some adjustment needed buy cheap buy twice we'll find out but with Myla's incredible two-year unlimited miles warranty I feel there's no better opportunity to try something different here with the 996 back together the guys ran a basic geo to make sure all those were pointing forwards and I was on my way so that's that then we're out the other side the car is put back together and there's no creaking. Big, big thanks to Right Tune. I'd called into the guys there plenty of times just for a cup of tea and a chat about cars, but I'd never actually handed my 911 over for work. Thanks to the knowledge and diligence of Chris, Joe and Tony, all the guys there did a tremendous job. So, I've just taken the long way around this roundabout. Yes. That corner there really illustrates exactly why I had all that work done and really why it was so essential. I'd basically forgotten what it was like to drive a 996 that was properly held together and by that I mean everything underneath the car was so knackered I'd inadvertently started driving around the problems with the car. However now with all these parts replenished it's predictable again. If I'm barreling into a corner I feel like I know how the car's going to react. It reacts exactly as it should. There's a wonderful compliance from the front and the rear of the car, particularly the rear of the car, actually. I know the front was creaking, but I mean, the rear in terms of geo was all over the place. It was so skittish and sketchy. Whereas now, it's wonderful, and I've just found another 20% of grip, I would say, all throughout the car. I've learned the difference between old, i.e. knackered chassis parts and new parts, and obviously the positives of that breeds, and then obviously we'll take on one step further now when we replace the factory suspension, which is what it is still, for some lovely KW coilovers. That'll be in the next video though. In the meantime, stay well, stay safe, and I'll see you again soon.